Prime Prime Research Cast. All right, this is the week of June 28th, 2020, and uh, <laughs> I am on vacation of sorts. Ugh. I'm not a vacation kind of guy. I am tired, exhausted, and by the time I get home, I'm going to wish I never came. But that's the nature of being a family man, I guess. Okay. So now that we've covered most of the basic theoretical foundation and framework for the STEM app economy and the AA STEM drive, we are going to move into breaking down a logical sort of perspective of what's going to happen or what could possibly happen, what the most likely outcome for any one particular um, I don't know, social structure that we have uh, in the event that the STEM ep economy is um, adopted and instantiated and uh, put into uh, working practice. So, all right. Um, so this episode is going to touch on um, what we are going to be looking at from the perspective of uh, how companies would work, um, advertisement, that sort of thing. Uh, okay. So before we get started, I've got a couple announcements. By the end of this next week, the contest, right, the um, post-scarcity, I guess, recreation of the word post-scarcity contest is going to have a sign-up form on the on stemdrive.ai, not stem prime, not for not the podcast website. Actually, maybe I should put it on the podcast website. Thinking about it now. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put it, let's put it on the podcast website. Okay, it's going to be on stem prime with a dot before the me. So stempri.me. So keep an eye out for that. That way you can uh, sign up ahead of time. Let me know that you're working on it. And I will also be uh, re, you know, sending updates, reminder emails, that sort of thing as we move towards the um, uh, submission date. Next thing, uh, newsletters. I'm going to be starting a newsletter campaign for those of you that are interested. Uh, t- if you want to be reminded when an episode comes out, um, uh, when a new set of um, edibles comes out, or when... Uh, any other sort of, you know, like, like a supplemental video or something comes out. So I will be letting everybody know about that soon. Uh, that will probably also be finished by the end of this week, as, along with the store. So stickers, hoodies, um, cool stuff you can buy to, to help um, support, support this effort. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the next announcement, this is more along the lines of of the project here, but um, I've been talking to a couple of different people and they've been helping me out with uh, formalizing formalizing the study, trying to get this, you know, wrapped up in the most professional, acceptable manner. And this is what, uh, this is what we're doing so far. We are no longer looking at just one single study. We are now looking at uh, two prerequisite studies. So we we're gonna have um, okay. If you if you recall, the original concept was the Terra Prime and Stem Prime uh, simulation studies, right? That is still going to happen, but it's not. There's actually a, a couple of studies that have to be done before we jump into that. So the simulation study, or the Terra Prime and, and Stem Prime simulations are still going to be um, game-based simulations, which means uh, I've got to get an IRB involved. Um, I've been communicating with a couple of uh, IRBs that work with um, you know, scientists and researchers um, you know, outside of the university sort of landscape. So I'm trying to get a better grap, gra, uh, grasp on that whole part of this. But um, what we're going to have to do 
is uh, I'm first going to have to do a sort of automated stem prime terra prime um, comparative study, which no no participants, no you know no necessarily need for a review board for you know a ethical review board, but this this is more of a computational study just to show the viability of of the F economy and and what what kind of numbers we're actually looking at as far as consumption production um, how uh, productive you know how energy how much energy is saved in, in an F economy the second study that we're going to have to do is a bit of an interesting study uh, but I'm going to have to figure out because we're going to eventually be doing a game-based simulation I'm going to have to try to work something out to see if even doing the game simulation is going to be a viable option here um, because the stem app economy rests its entire like <laughs> the entire foundation like what causes it to work why it even works is purely psychological not purely but a, a large portion of it is psychological and if i can't get a sort of if i can get the participants to be able to project kind of into their you know generated character in the game how they would act and perform and, and interact if they were self-actualizing at the highest level you know what i mean then this isn't going to work so the next study is going to have to just it's going to be a study on whether or not the the projection of a self-actualizing character the model that somebody has of their character in their heads if their projection and actions of that model into the game actually falls in line with with Maslow's hierarchy and self-actualization. So, two prerequisite studies that are going to have to be done before <laughs> before I step up, but I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that that is where we're at, and as, as that progresses, I will let you know what, what's happening with that. Um, let's see. Okay, so I think that is it for announcements. Yep, we're going to move on to what what the business landscape looks like under a post scarcity ep economy. So I can hide the mic from that wind. Is that protecting the mic? <laughs> Okay, now as you begin to kind of break down what what society would look like under the, under a STEM STEM ep economy, as you begin to follow you know follow through, looking at every different aspect of, of our lives and how it would be affected if everybody's needs were being taken care of, and if the majority of people were self actualizing. Um, quick side note, simply because. The structure of the society is built to to encourage self-actualization across the board. Um, it does not necessarily mean everybody is going to be self-actualizing. Now, I, I I'm I'm not sure what neurologically that says about you know certain outliers. For instance. My reminder to get up and walk around for five minutes is get up and walk around for letting five me know minutes. what's up. Okay. Okay, so neurologically, we know that there are outliers in several different vectors of, of psychology. And often, um, it breaks down to a, some sort of neurological abnormality or a, you know, something's not working correctly, whatever whatever the case is, whether it's structural or, I guess, I don't know, wetware, 
related. But um, because we've never dealt with <laughs> the possibility of so many people self-actualizing on such a grand scale, we've never had to consider whether or not everybody is, is capable of self-actualization and, and what the circumstances are to, to encourage such, such a global, widespread self-actualization. Uh, now, I, I've started to kind of use the term social auto-actualization, meaning sort of the anomalous kind of un, unforeseen phenomena that would occur if everybody in a society was self-actualizing or if the majority was. So social auto-actualization is the idea that it, it's basically what what the STEM epiconomy does, right? You introduce different motivational foci, you introduce different psychological structures or psychologically active you know, external structures to get people motivated to want to want to self-actualize. But what is okay? So so that because because it turns into the cycle, right? Because once people are self-actualizing, their desires turn around and give back to society. And once people are giving back to society, and and other people are actualizing, then you have this sort of cycle. Right, you have this feedback loop where people are actualizing, giving back, actualizing, giving back. All right, so my my term for that that I've been using is social self, or I'm sorry, so, ah, social auto actualization. <clears throat> okay. Now, recently I've been wondering what exactly the the anomalous effects would be. What exactly are the sort of side effects that I have not considered in, in this sort of situation? And I can't guarantee that all of them would be good. So, um, so that is something that I need to consider and think about. However, going back to, um, because we are now kind of jumping into the business side of, of what this landscape would look like. What I think the natural progression would look like doesn't mean that this is what would happen. This is what I have sort of concocted, okay? But it's an educated assumption. It's an educated guess as to what, what we would, what we would see here. The first thing you consider is how every business, how business would just shift completely. And not only the structure inside the business, but how intra-business relationships work, how businesses interact with their market, um, what exactly a market would be under, under a STEM ep economy, and how this would all kind of play out. Because one, everybody's being taken care of, all right? Two, Everybody has everything that they need. So everybody is, is, is self-actualizing. So you're not, you're not dealing with, you know, you're not dealing with marketing to people that don't have self-esteem, which a lot, of, a lot of advertisement is focused on. You're, you're pointing out that, hey, you need our product so you can feel better about yourself. And so under an ep economy, <laughs> You're dealing with a completely different audience. You're dealing with people that are actualizing. You're dealing with people that know who they are on the most fundamental, you know, psychologically stable sort of level here. So, so we're not we're not dealing with your traditional social structure. <laughs> My mouth is so dry, I can barely talk right now. Okay. So moving on, because that is the landscape, landscape we're talking about, we have a few obvious, you know, side effects here. 
One of them is that advertisement sort of isn't going to be what it used to be. And that means that marketing, like the marketing and advertisement whole sector, you know, the, the entire branch of marketing and advertisement sort of is reduced to more of a, I, I'm not sure exactly how this would reduce. I would assume that it would be more of a sort of a word, word or word of mouth sort of communique. You know, people have something that we need or there's some sort of project. And a lot of this would happen online as well. So you have some company A that has, okay, let's rewind for a second here. I don't think we're gonna have necessarily companies either because a company sort of supposes that you have this kind of hierarchical leadership structure of, of a unit that is, I mean, it really is a, an exclusive sort of deal, right? That's what a company is. You don't work for us, right? So you are outside of our company. And you can't just go around and get a job with anybody. You can't go to start working and join some group that's that's producing, you know, whatever you're interested in and in helping produce. So we're dealing with a completely different, you know, just, I keep saying it's a different landscape. It's a completely different mode of, of production and distribution. So one of the biggest things here is that your market your marketing and advertisement, advertisement, I think, just goes away to dinosaurs. You don't have advertisement anymore. And let's talk about this just for a second. Before we go further into how, how the, you know, how a company structure or how companies, I, I think you're looking more at, at a sort of collective. We're, we're dealing more with, with collective now. We're not looking at exclusive companies, we're looking at inclusive, interoperable collectives. So before we go further, let's talk about advertisement, okay? <laughs> because this is sort of a really unique side effect that I think would happen here. <sighs> One, manipulative advertisement just does not exist. It could not. You're living in a society where everybody's self-actualizing, right? So everybody knows who they are. Everybody knows what they're doing to contribute back to society. So you don't have people that are, first of all, going to be swayed by manipulative advertisement or by, you know, having issues with truth in advertisement. You don't have that sort of problem. But not only that, because the market is not financially driven anymore, Okay, because we're dealing with a feedback loop, this feedback loop, right? This, this um, social auto-actualization, the financial drives to do anything like that just don't exist anymore. So not only are the millions, millions, billions, trillions, whatever, right, of dollars that the world spends on advertising and that energy, all that manpower, everything about it, is turned around and refocused on productivity and collective synergism and doing what's best for the whole and making the world a better place. You, that, that, that's a side effect. Like that's, what's, <laughs> that's what the fallout is. I guess it's not really fallout. That's what is, the side effect is here though. You are getting rid of this sort of, this sort of, I don't know. Not, not. I have no idea what kind of bird that is. It looks like a duck, but I'm like a thousand percent sure that ducks do not make that sound. <laughs> anyway.
Okay, so the side effect is that you're refocusing energy away from something these deceptive marketing practices into what is more productive and healthy for a society. Now, speaking of decept deceptive and shifting marketing practices, spam completely disappears. Now, I don't know if you've looked this up before. Here, I'm gonna have to take a quick moment and check this out, but the percentage of internet traffic that is directly, <laughs> uh, okay, let's, let's just find out really fast. Percentage of internet, internet traffic that is spam. <laughs> this is the report. 90% of all email, 4% of all internet traffic is either DDoS packets or spam email. More than 50% of email is spam. Uh, it's not making sense. It just said 90%. Uh, I don't have to click into this link and find out what's really going on here. But, I mean, it's high. Here's some sim snippets from a Google search. Report, spam, okay, th these are separate, these are separate um, reports from, it's sort of a collection on, on uh, skeptics.stackexchange. So, what percentage of total internet traffic is spam? And he, okay, the um, original poster is, is providing these just completely different stats from different sources. And the answer, the one that has been given the answer says, some of these statistics seem to be, okay, FYI, just so you know, this is skeptics.stackexchange.com. The question is, what percentage of total internet traffic is spam? Um, asked by going, like I just, what you would think, G-O-I-N-G, and edited by SK, SK lives with two V's and a Z. Let's see. And the answer was by somebody named uh, APOORV020. Some of these statistics seem to be wildly used or widely used due to several botnet takedowns by Microsoft along with law enforcement agencies. Reduced spam amounts drastically for a few weeks, but they seem to creep up again. This article, for example, says global spam is at 88% of emails, uh, glo global spam, 88% of emails, but spam fell by a third after the Rustock botnet, take botnet takedown by Microsoft. The source seems to be Message Labs, an anti-spam brand of Symantec. They use statistics for, from servers running their software. Another good source seems to be Maug, M-A-W-A-W-G, sounded weird, which use confidential data from ISPs, mail providers, etc., to collect statistics on about 500 million mailboxes. They estimate spam from between 88 to 91 percent of email traffic. So that, that's what I thought it was. It's, it's pretty close to ridiculous, okay? So all of that manpower, all of that bandwidth, all of that data, all of that inf just useless information goes just gone because that financial drive disappears. Think of how much energy and manpower and like mental work and just deceptive practices go into producing this bullshit. Under a STEM epic economy, spam would not exist, at least not the way that we have it now. And if it does, it would be probably more, you know, politically motivated, and it would be such a minuscule, small amount that it would not even be a bother. We are wasting so much energy and time on this shit. We have entire facilities dedicated to spam detection. If you think, okay, so let's let's rewind just for a minute, okay? We're already taking about, simply by converting to a currency-free economic system, or, right, the STEM economy. We are removing 
35 to 45 percent of of manpower, energy usage, right? Uh, just mental mental uh, exertion, everything that is directly related to keeping the currency-driven economy going. We are taking that and redirecting it towards a collective progressive mindset. Now we're getting rid of just as a byproduct, okay? Just as as a, a side effect here, we're getting rid of advertisement basically most of what advertisement is the manipulative practices the the spam the the nonsense okay all this sort of stuff we're taking that and redirecting it towards social progression so i i am going to have to look at the numbers on this and and try to figure it out but now we we just have moved from 35 45 percent of all you know workforce exertion mental effort energy consumption you know all of that and redirecting that as well so we just bumped up to without sticking my foot in my mouth we're going at least over 50 percent of all like just general human effort is being totally redirected to progression production scientific advancements helping each other making the world a better place like that is a lot of manpower, right? That's like mind blowing how much of a difference the society would be under a STEM epic economy. <clears throat> ah. Also along, along the uh, same lines of spam, robocalls, cold calling, all that goes away. Truth in advertisement. Okay, so what would advertisement really look like? Now we've got collectives, these sort of collectives that work together. And because everybody can just go get a job and they can go do what they want to do, what makes them feel good, what makes them feel useful, what makes them self-actualize now. They can just, you know, hey, I, I would like to work here. Cool, hey, yeah, we would love you to come aboard. You know, let's let's set you up. Let's get some something cool going. So now it's it's not this sort of process where you're trying to, you're, you're being vetted, okay? Because everybody knows everybody's trying to become their best possible self. And if somebody is coming to your company telling, or your collective now, telling you that they want to work and help with, work with you guys and help you do whatever you're doing, you know they're sincere. You know that it really is something that they want to do. It's, it's they're coming to you because in their minds, what you are doing, what they want to help you do, is where their self-actualization rests. So now you are fully, like who wouldn't be comfortable with that? You know they are coming to you because that is what they want to do, 100%. And if it's not, if it's not, you'll find out soon and they can go find something else. But for the most part, most people are going to settle on one particular, you know, profession for, for a while, for a minute. I don't expect everybody would stick with the same profession for the rest of their lives, but I wouldn't say that not, you know, I would bet a fair amount of people do. Okay, so now people are coming to places. This is why, this is why unemployment is an impossibility under a STEM epic economy, because you can't be unemployed. Because everybody's being taken care of. So you're not working for food, you're working for progression, you're working for your own self-actualization, and you're working for societal auto-actualization. That is what you're working for. And because of the motivational foci, because of how you restructured everything, that is what people are going to do. It's not this, it's not this, you know, cutthroat nonsense that we're doing right now that is just damaging us. It's this almost, upward ramp of this is continually this feedback sort of loop of just increasing <laughs> velocity as the whole social structure just catapults itself into the infinite whatever is coming next for us so um Okay, so that, that is advertisement, that the whole thing, right? That whole idea, that whole 
part of everything. That's that's a big thing, right? That's and if that is not a logical breakdown, email me. Let me know. I am no longer... Well, if you go to STEM Prime with a dot before the M-E, okay, you can uh, send me a message there if you, if you don't agree with me. If you, if you have a different perspective or if you, you know, have some information that you think that would alter my, my analysis of how this would play out, let me know. So we can, you know, make an addendum video and, re and uh, make a follow-up video with that, with that information. But this seems like a fairly logical breakdown of the situation. Because if you don't have financial drives, most of all of the rest of the sectors of industry that we were just wasting our time on disappear. And all that wasted energy and silly nonsense that people are working on hard every day, those efforts are being redirected to progress. And if that is not a logical, you know, if I'm missing something here, let me know. But that seems extremely logical to me. It seems like almost a, you know, yeah, if you pull that block out, the thing's going to crumble. It's just, that is the what happens when you do any one particular action. You know, if you set a, put a plank, you know, over a little ball, set something on one end of the plank and jump on the other end, that cup or whatever you set on the other side is gonna catapult up. It's just, you know, cause and effect. It's, it's a logical breakdown of, of how things would play out. Um, but again, we are mysterious creatures and we do a lot of crazy things and there's a lot of stuff we do that doesn't make sense. And a lot of that is uh, kind, of, kind of concealed in psychology and sociology. So uh, if, there's, if there's some phenomena that you're aware of that I, you don't think I'm, I'm taking into account here, just shoot me an email. We'll, we'll get this figured out. Okay, now, as far as the company goes, now remember we've got this STEM, we've got the STEM drive, okay, we've got the network of, of STEM, um, STEM, uh, I'm sorry, we've got the AI STEM drive, right? We've got this multi-tier, multi-stream uh, network of distributed artificial learning agents that are there to, one, to help us save energy and to do things in the most productive method possible. Um, save material, save space, save time. Okay, that's what it's. That's what function A is of the stem drive and the stem network. Function B is to is to set in place those social motivational foci that get people get people to, you know, want to self actualize. So we're handling. Or, okay, sort of one of the sub sub. I guess um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Secondary second level responsibilities underneath getting people to self actualize is providing for their basic needs, right? So that's why I guess the entire system really the main main goal is to get people to self actualize. And Underneath that, providing for people's needs, okay, in order to provide for everybody's needs, we have to minimize waste. We have to maximize um, what we get out of our energy uses and, and what we get out of our material, temporal, and spatial use. So, and which again is why we need AI to do this. You, you could not, I, I don't care how brilliant of a software engineer you are or I am, you absolutely could not write any sort of program or drive or anything that could do that and interact with a with a human society it's just not feasible you need machine learning to do that 100% there's no question about it you just could not do it any other way yeah just I just got off on a tangent, didn't I? Where was I? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, so our companies now. We don't have companies. We have 
these collectives, right? And the stem, the stem drive connects the companies, okay? Um, well, how advertisement would work by means of, by, from in, in this perspective, you don't have advertisement. The, the stem drive understands what is out there. Now, sure, there's going to be, you know, on the internet, you can look things up, people will be talking about things, the really cool stuff will be out there, but everything's gonna be open and up there. And if you decide you need some, you know, invention or utility or some sort of whatever that some company is developing out there, it wouldn't be that difficult to find one, especially with Google running, you know, the search algorithms and, and running that whole side of things. It's, it's a very pragmatic sort of distribution model because everything is connected now. The whole reason we were doing advertisement from the get-go was because we were trying to find ways to catch people's attention, to get our product to them because we want to push our products out. But this is not how this works now. Now, people need things, so society needs certain specific things, and now the product comes to them because the network listens, the society listens, and now you have people that are trying, you know, people trying to respond to that. You have, it's a, like I said, like I've said before, this is no longer, you know, individual people running around and communicating and working together in little groups. We are now stepping into the realm of becoming a supra organism optima. Not a super organism, the optima is a different thing. A super organism is a group of, of animals, a, once a single species group of animals that work together, that are so dependent on each other that a single animal could not survive outside of that group for an ext extended period of time. So ant colonies, okay, um, whatever, there, there's several animals like this. But humans can survive outside of the, the social group for extended periods of time. Sometimes their entire life they can, you know, just decide to dip out, go live in the mountains for the rest of their lives, and, and, and we can do that. We are capable of surviving in that method. But we are not capable of achieving self-actualization without proper interaction with other people. So the superorganism optima is, some, is a group of organisms that cannot achieve and maintain self-actualization with, you know, outside of the group for an extended period of time. Unless you're Buddhist, but that's special training, unique, and, and they still rely on each other. So, yeah, never mind. Even if you're Buddhist. <laughs> okay. This is not beautiful. <sighs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of vacations. I feel like I sort of got uh, guilt tripped into coming here. And the reason is I don't know. I I just always go home feeling much more exhausted and annoyed and frustrated than had I just stayed home and worked. I've been working the entire time I'm here because I need to get work done. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I'm glad everybody else is having fun, but this is just not my scene, dude. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. COVID is on a spike. Like, it's on, on the rebound, you know, it's coming back with a fury. And I just don't feel comfortable you know, I brought my masks, I brought you know, hand sanitizer up the wazoo. I am not comfortable with being in the same house. I don't care if they're people that I love and, and relatives and shit, dude. It's, I feel very uncomfortable because I don't know how they're living. I don't know what they're interacting with. You know, I know everybody's trying their best to be safe, but that doesn't, it obviously is not stopping COVID from doing what it is doing. So that's my rant there on that. Okay, so advertisement now turns into sort of this networked thing. We still have social media. 
so we still have you know the best products are are getting out there best ideas are getting out there people get out there and propose ideas and systems you know it would just be a different thing there, there's not going to be a manipulation somebody comes up with an idea and a development and a product because they want to make the world a better place because they want to make life better for everybody so that particular you know I guess stream of, of interaction and communication is a completely different aspect of of getting the word out or a, a mode of getting the word out so I, I can't tell you exactly how this would work but we're humans we figure shit out right it would be different and and the change for after, after installing instantiating and, and getting getting a stem network up and running it would take some time for people to kind of maneuver through this but you know there would be heads on it there would be people that understand so, so uh, social structures and how people interact so i don't think advertisement as far as how it's going to end up being how i think it, because of how the system is laid out because people are going to be self-actualizing because we have the social auto actualization and, and you know that cycle just happening we no longer have to worry about things happening that aren't good for us because everybody is going to try to do what is best for us and in when that comes to advertisement or how to get people you know how to get the information out there and get people to know that this now exists come get one we're making one for everybody or whoever wants one we're going to figure it out and we're going to figure out the best possible way to do it and spam is no longer going to be a thing anymore like cold cold calls don't are just not going to exist how fucking cool is that you can't tell me you're getting not not at least scratching your chin and thinking yeah i don't think it's possible but that would be cool right even if you think I'm full of shit, even if you think I'm blowing smoke up your ass, I know for a fact that you are seeing this in your mind and thinking that that would actually be pretty cool, right? So, even if I'm blowing smoke up my own ass, that's why I'm doing this, to find out if I'm just being stupid or if there is some legitimate foundation here. So far, all the science is uphold it. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing my part Right? I'm doing the what I need to do to to figure out whether or not this is a viable a viable option for us. Um, okay. Uh, now, as I said, in I believe it was epi- the first episode. Oh, man, that was a while ago when I was talking about actual methods of distribution. How we have the uh, module modular transport uh, system. Again, because because companies no longer have this need to keep information from other companies or from from the world at large, we don't. There's not this financial drive to keep your secrets to yourself so you can make the most money off of it. Because that is no longer a problem, we now have a much more open, right? We, and, and because we no longer have, have these companies, which is kind of like fits under that whole that whole you know exclusive tight little circle of of us and them sort of mentality, right? We now have a, we, all of us are a single functioning system and this is just what we do for the whole. And because now this is the, the sort of new mentality of how everything works, now you have commu- uh, uh, the, these collectives interacting openly with other collectives. There's no more, you know, the, the competition no longer is this financially driven competition, but the competition is, you know, like good sportsmanship like competition. You know, like, uh, hey, you guys, we have this idea. We, we want to do something like this. So, the best possible way, right, to come to the best possible um, path to creating this new idea is to get a few different groups working on the same thing. Don't communicate on what you're doing. Start start developing it, developing it individually across these different groups. 
and after you have at least a, a functional theoretical model of what your new product is going to look like or how it's going to work. Then you open up communication. This is what we came up with. Oh, cool, this is what we came up with. Hey, yours is kind of like us. Hey, I like that idea. And so you take the best parts from each idea and then you create the one thing. And now all, all these groups, right, come to an agreement of what the best possible, you know, breakdown and, and methodology for de developing whatever new product this is. And each one now produces it. And you can have variations, right? They'll do the, they'll do the, whatever model with the whatever style to it, and they'll do whatever this, whatever that. But you have you originally had this, this friendly sort of good sportsmanship like uh, um, competition, and because you had that, now you have the best possible model that you guys could have come up with under whatever circumstances and now all of them have it and the only variations are maybe stylistic variations or utility based variations you know we this group wants to add this little tiny tiny function because they think a certain sub sub set of of, of people would enjoy that that single particular edition right and then they do another edition and somebody just says the plain bare bones model or whatever. So the, the sociological and, and psychological structure of this, this completely alters everything. It makes things better <laughs> on every level. And uh, if, if there are any, if there are any, you know, negative side effects, I haven't been able to think of any. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend some time and run through everything and try to come up with as many negative side effects that I can think of that, that a STEM, uh, STEM epiconomy would produce. Just, just for shits and giggles. I mean, I've been thinking about this for years. I, I conceptualized this about 10 years ago. And I've been, been slowly building this in my head for, for about the same, that same amount of time. So, because I have been thinking mostly of the positive aspects, let's see if I can disprove it. Let's see if I can come up with some good enough reason to say this won't work. Uh huh. Okay, let's do this. So, um, that is about that as far as this episode goes. Um, I can decide what I want to do for the next episode because I'm breaking this down into different areas of, of society. We could do corrections in the legal landscape, government. We could do let's do but let's branch off from this. Let's do let's do distribution. Let's do distribution. Well, you know, I'm not gonna settle on anything right now. I still have a lot of work to do. But okay, that's that's this for this one. And Again, everybody be safe out there. It is it is crazy. We are in the middle of a spike because people are not paying attention to uh, just to what's going on out there. Uh, it's it, it's scary. I I am shocked at how many people. We went to Yellowstone yesterday, and of course we all had our masks, but I was just blown away at how many people were just talking to strangers face to face, no masks, no hand sanitizer, nothing. Like, it's like nobody cares that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Not just that, we're in the middle of a pandemic that is on its second wave. It's coming back and it's spiking again. 
because nobody's paying any attention to it and it, nobody cares, it seems like. It's so just, I don't understand what's happening in people's minds. Oh. Under a STEM app economy, this would not be happening. Just saying. If you've been following every, all the episodes, you know, what was it, three, episode three or four, where I talked specifically about how, how we would handle, you know, a pandemic under a STEM ep economic system. All right. Well, everybody be safe. Take care, and uh, we will see you next time. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next time. I, I have a whole list of different uh, different social aspects that that uh, the STEM the STEM drive and the economy would would affect and how it would affect it. But I'm going to have to decide which one I want to do next time. But we'll see. Okay, guys, take care, be safe, and. Don't catch COVID. Keep your hand sanitizer in your belt and don't let anybody melt your mask. So frustrating. Freaking vacation. My mask would not be melted if we were not on vacation. Okay, end rant. Take care. Bye-bye.